Hi, and welcome to the module covering the electricity supply system in osmosis for thermal power plants and transmission and distribution. Looking at the overview of the training material, we have now arrived at module 4, where details about the power plants and transmission and distribution is described. We will start with the thermal power plants and the transmission and distribution. The content of this module is divided into two parts, one for defining the thermal power plants and second defining the transmission and distribution. We will start with defining the thermal power plants. Looking at the reference energy system, we have the primary supply, which has been covered in previous modules, which supplies fuels to secondary energy supply, which this and next coming modules will cover. We can see that the gray power plants in the secondary energy supply, we have a combined cycle gas turbine, which is a thermal power plant. The primary energy supply comes from two sources, domestic national, natural gas production and natural gas imports. Both of these technologies output fuel is natural gas, which is supplied to the secondary energy supply, combined cycle gas turbine. Looking more in detail over typical thermal power plants, we can see the same structure as in the overall reference energy system. The structure is that the input fuel corresponds to the fuel or fuels consumed by the power plant, and the output fuel is at least one output fuel, in this case, electricity. When building a model in osmosis, there are a few parameters that we need to consider. The ones listed are the ones that typically are defined. The first is the input activity ratio. This is the relationship between the power plant technology and input fuel. In our example, this is natural gas. The output activity ratio, which is the relationship between the power plant technology and output fuel. In our example, this is electricity. The capital cost, fixed cost and variable cost are the cost perimeters for the power plant technology. Capital cost is the investment cost per capacity unit. Variable cost is the cost per produced energy unit and fixed cost is the annual cost per capacity unit. Looking at the residual capacity, this is the existing installed capacity, which is defined for every year for the technologies that you have in your system. This is added to avoid the model to install capacity, which is already invested in prior to the modeling period. The availability factor is the share of hours that the power plant can be operational during a year without being shut down for operational maintenance. Osmosis will, when best suited during a year for the amount of hours defined, set the energy production to zero for the technology. The operational life is the amount of years that the power plant is operational. Optional parameters in the thermal power plants are the capacity factor, which is the share of actual electrical energy output over a given period of time to the maximum possible energy output over that period. Osmosis will, for all electricity production, decrease the maximum energy output times capacity factor for that given time slice. Total annual max capacity and total annual min capacity is <clears throat> the total maximum and minimum existing residual plus cumulatively installed capacity allowed for a technology in a specified year. The total annual max capacity investment and total annual min capacity investment is also defined in the capacity unit gigawatt. And this is the maximum and minimum planned 
new capacity allowed to be installed for a technology in a specified year. So the total annual max capacity is the total with the residual capacity and all the installed capacity that is up until that year, while the total annual max capacity investment it's just isolated for that individual year. As mentioned, the input and output activity ratio is the relation fuel to the defined technology. Here in this example, the coal power plant technology consumes three units of the fuel coal for each energy unit. For the same power plant technology, the output fuel is electricity production, one unit of energy per energy unit. This is the efficiency of the power plant, meaning its efficiency is 1 divided by 3, 33%. Looking more into the details of the cost perimeters of the power plants, there are three perimeters that are defined. For the variable cost, the fuel for a thermal power plant is typically defined upstream in the reference energy system, in the primary energy supply. This means that the cost for the fuel is defined in the fuel technology, allowing to have different prices for domestically produced and imported fuels such as natural gas. The variable cost related to the power plant technology in our example for the combined cycle gas turbine, is other consumable costs that are related to producing one energy unit. For the fixed cost, these costs are related to annual costs, which cost every year even though the power plant is not producing any energy, such as salaries, taxes and insurance. The unit is cost per capacity unit year. The capital cost is the cost for installing on unit more capacity. This can be depreciation or one-time fixed charge. As mentioned previously, the availability factor is the planned outage, such as maintenance of the power plant, the power plant can only operate for the share defined, for example, 95% of the time. Osmosis will plan for the best timing of the downtown during the year for the 5%. For the capacity factor, this represents the capacity available for energy production per time slice. These are unplanned outages. For the operational lifetime, this is useful lifetime of the technology expressed in years.